G'day everyone and welcome back to our paranormal world. You've heard of the Bermuda Triangle. It's infamous for disappearances of boats, ships and aircraft. But you might be surprised to know another triangle exists where many maritime and aviation mysteries also remain unsolved. That is Australia's Bass Strait Triangle. I'll admit that the name Bass Strait Triangle doesn't have quite the same ring as the Bermuda Triangle does, but the lack of a snappy name doesn't mean it isn't as mysterious. It's a strait which separates the state of Tasmania from mainland Australia, and it was formed by rising sea levels over 8,000 years ago. It is 240 kilometres or 149 miles wide at its narrowest point and it's relatively shallow with only small sections achieving depths beyond 50 metres or 164 feet. Because of this combination of scant depth and the strong ocean currents funnelling in from the Antarctic Southern Ocean and the Tasman Sea, Bass Strait is known for really quite unpredictable sea conditions and it's prone to tall waves which are short in length and terribly confused swell. In spite of the frequently awful conditions, this is an important seaway, being the shortest and most effective sea route between eastern and western Australia and it's a super highway for shipping between Tasmania and the mainland and hundreds of vessels of every size have come to grief in these waters, with some disappearing without a trace. Historically, a lot of these incidents are directly attributable to poor charts and limited knowledge. However, it is the 20th century incidents which hold the greatest mystery. On the 21st of August 1920, the Amelia J sailed for Hobart from Newcastle, just north of Sydney, loaded with coal and a crew of 12. But it never arrived. She was last seen off Jarvis Bay in New South Wales by the crew of the SS Melbourne on the 5th of September, and her disappearance launched what was up until that time, the largest search ever for a missing vessel and the first to make use of aircraft in the search. On the 10th of September, another vessel, the SS Southern Cross, would also disappear. The HMAS Platypus was initially deployed to search for the Amelia J and the SS Southern Cross, but it was replaced by the HMAS Swordsman. On September 23, the search was expanded to include two de Havilland 9A biplanes and, incredibly, one of these planes, piloted by Major Stutt, was last seen flying into heavy cloud and never heard from again. Some pieces of the Southern Cross were later found washed ashore on King Island, but in spite of extensive searches, no trace was ever found of the Amelia J and her crew, or the missing de Havilland and her crew of two. In 1979, the 11-metre yacht, the Charleston, disappeared whilst en route to Sydney to participate in the famed Sydney to Hobart yacht race. On board were her five crew, all experienced yachtsmen who had prepared the yacht well for the race season, having won the 180 nautical mile Maria Island race in record time. The Charleston was the pinnacle of yacht design at the time, and with a triple diagonal cedar plank hull, she and her crew were all prepared for the sea. Despite the often menacing conditions of the Tasman Sea and Bass Strait, the seas were pretty good for sailing that day, with a strong wind warning, but no storms in the area. Strangest of all, there were no distress calls. The Charleston literally disappeared. Over a month of searches, including search crews from the New Zealand Air Force and privately financed search flights, 
all yielded no trace of the yacht or her crew. Not a piece of wreckage was found, no life rafts, not even an oil slick. A psychic was even consulted, and the search extended as far south as the South Island of New Zealand, but all searches yielded nothing. Perhaps though, the most famous disappearance in the Bass Strait Triangle is that of Frederick Valentich. Valentich was a 20-year-old Australian pilot who had a real love of aviation. He had twice applied for the Royal Australian Air Force, but had been unsuccessful due to inadequate educational qualifications. However, he was determined to have an aviation career, and he was studying part-time to become a commercial pilot. It seems his record wasn't great, and though he was licensed for light aircraft, he couldn't seem to master the commercial flying exams. He had over 150 hours total flying time, and he held a class four instrument rating, which allowed him to fly at night, but only if the weather was clear. On the 21st of October 1978, Valentich logged an intention to fly to King Island in the Bass Strait from Moorabbin in Victoria. He told officials he intended to pick up some friends, but told others he was collecting crayfish. Later investigations would find that neither of these stated reasons were true, and he'd also failed to inform the airport at King Island of his intention to land there. He was flying a Cessna 182L. At 7.06pm, he radioed Melbourne Air Traffic Control and reported that there was an unidentified aircraft following him at 4,500 feet. Air Traffic Control responded to say there was no known aircraft in the area. He said he could see the aircraft, which was illuminated by four landing lights, and while he was unable to confirm the type, he said it passed him at around a thousand feet overhead and at high speed. He then reported that the aircraft was approaching him from the east and speculated that the pilot might be toying with him. He said the aircraft was orbiting him and that he could see it had a shiny metallic surface and a green light. Valentich then reported that he was having engine problems. He was asked to identify the aircraft and he replied with, it's not an aircraft. The radio transmission was interrupted by what was described as metallic scraping sounds and all contact was lost. This is the recording from his conversation with air traffic control that night. This is Delta Sierra Juliet. Is there any known traffic below 5,000 feet? No known traffic. Seems to be a large aircraft below 5,000 feet. What type of aircraft is it? I cannot confirm. It's four bright, seems to me like landing lights. The aircraft has just passed over me at at least 1,000 feet above. Is there any Air Force aircraft in the vicinity? No known aircraft in the vicinity. Seems to be playing some sort of game. He's flying over me. Delta Sierra Juliet, it's not an aircraft, it's... Can you describe the, uh, the aircraft? As it's flying past, it's a long shape. I cannot identify it, it has such speed. It's before me right now, Melvin. How large would the, um, the object be? Seems like it's stationary. What it's doing right now is orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic, like, it's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. An air and sea search was undertaken, which included ocean traffic, Royal Australian Air Force aircraft, and eight civilian planes, and covered an area of over a thousand square miles. The search ceased after four days, with no trace found. Five years later, an engine cowl flap was washed ashore on Flinders Island, and that part was identified as having come from a Cessna 182. 
proposed explanations include Valentich staging his own disappearance or him becoming disoriented and crashing into the sea. Interestingly though, on the same day Valentich disappeared, Roy Manifold took this photo over Bass Strait. Roy's son Jason was with his father when the photo was taken and Jason says his father returned to the shed after snapping the photo. Jason, however, remained outside to watch the sky. He says although he couldn't see anything, he could hear the sound of a plane's engine overhead and then instead of fading off into the distance, it just stopped abruptly. He said it was as if someone had turned a radio off and then there was nothing but silence. The Roy Manifold photo has been analysed as being a genuine photograph and not manipulated in any way. But exactly what it shows and whether or not the object is related to the Valentich disappearance is still up for debate. Many ufologists have seized upon this photograph and speculate that Valentich's aircraft was destroyed by and or he was abducted by extraterrestrials. And before you scoff and think those crazy UFO obsessed people, there is another disappearance 40 years earlier in Bass Strait which shares some similarities with these occurrences. In 1934, the recently commissioned de Havilland Express, Miss Hobart, disappeared with 11 people on board, nine passengers and two pilots. It remains one of the most perplexing aviation mysteries. The aircraft was crossing Bass Strait in perfect flying conditions. It was state of the art with four independent engines. There were no reported engine problems, but even so, the chances of four engines failing at one time have been practically universally dismissed. In the final transmissions from the aircraft, the crew claimed they could hear the sound of a plane around them and they reported some sort of aerial machine coming towards them. Then they reported a humming sound which suddenly stopped. The only theory as to the disappearance of Miss Hobart is that perhaps there was a fuel leak which caused the aircraft to attempt a landing on the ocean surface, which would, it was surmised, cause the plane to immediately dive for the seabed and may account for the complete absence of wreckage. Yet many reject this theory, questioning why the pilots wouldn't have radioed a distress under those circumstances. These are just a few of the list of disappearances in the Strait. During World War II, many military aircraft were lost during bombing exercises and training flights, but these were probably crashes from performing low-level bombing practice. There are instances where such crashes occurred over land. In the 18th and 19th century, Many other vessels disappeared without a trace in the area and those are presumed to be wrecks caused by a combination of inadequate charts and bad weather. Yet the mysterious nature of the Amelia J, the de Havilland 9A and the Charleston as well as Miss Hobart and the Valentich disappearance remain tantalisingly unanswered. And just what is that? in the manifold photo. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to share it with your networks. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon setting your notifications to all so you can stay up to date with all of the paranormal content on this channel. I'll see you next time.